I'm going to give some brief coverage to a very hard but important part of the foreign tax credit limit, losses. When you have a loss in one year, it affects future year credit limits. There are three flavors of losses in this regard. Loss in one basket, where there is profit in another basket. Overall foreign losses, where foreign loss offsets domestic profit. And overall domestic loss, where domestic loss offsets foreign profit. Each has different effects. When you have one of these three types of loss situations, the loss that offsets other income causes future income in the loss category to be recharacterized. For example, assume my profitable CPA practice has a foreign loss in 2017 and foreign profit in 2018. Part of the 2018 foreign profit is considered domestic for computing the foreign tax credit limit. These loss recharacterization or resourcing provisions in sections 904 F and G apply both to individuals and corporations. Recharacterization is always limited to the amount of prior loss not already recharacterized. The long-term effects of the resourcing rules is to put everything in equilibrium. At the end, cumulative profits for each category of income are the same as if the losses had never been used to offset income in another category. The rules for each of the three different flavors of resourcing are a bit different. Losses in a foreign source basket cause all future income in that basket, up to the cumulative losses, to be recharacterized to the basket where foreign source income was offset. If there's a loss of $1,000 in the general basket in 2017 that offset passive income and general basket profit of $800 in 2018, the entire $800 gets recharacterized as passive. It's a bit different where there's an overall foreign loss that reduced otherwise taxable domestic income future foreign source income must be recharacterized, but here you get to choose how much to recharacterize each year. At least half of the foreign source income must be treated as domestic, but you can choose a higher portion. If you dispose of assets that generate foreign source income, any gain is recognized and recharacterized regardless of any non-recognition provisions. The effect of the basket and overall loss resourcing is to limit foreign source taxable income to the same as it would have been on a cumulative basis. Remember, this only impacts the foreign tax credit limitation, not taxable income. The third resourcing rule is a bit different still. Where there was a domestic loss incurred after 2006 that reduced foreign source taxable income, the taxpayer can elect to treat future domestic source income as foreign source. This is a year-by-year -year choice. It doesn't apply to years in which foreign taxes are deducted. For this overall domestic loss rule, the domestic income recharacterized as foreign source is apportioned among the foreign baskets. Before 2017, the choice each year was all or nothing. Either treat all of the domestic income that could be recharacterized as foreign or none of it. After 2017, two things changed. First, the amount recharacterized could be anywhere from 50% of the domestic income to 100%, limited in each case to the previously unrecharacterized losses. Second, the two special post-2017 baskets related to sections 951A and 245A are ignored, so any recharacterization doesn't increase those. Both of these changes after 2017 are taxpayer favorable. 
these loss recharacterization rules don't apply where there's a loss in all categories. They're triggered only where one type of loss offsets another type of income. Again, resourcing applies only in computing the foreign tax credit limitation, not for anything else. It does not change taxable income. So let's recap the foreign tax credit. A credit is allowed for foreign income taxes paid or accrued by a taxpayer paying U.S. tax. The credit is allowed only for foreign taxes of the taxpayer. It is allowed only for those foreign taxes that are taxes on net income or tax in lieu of such an income tax. Taxes paid by a subsidiary of a U.S. corporation are allowed to the corporation as a credit. This deemed paid credit happens only when the corporation recognizes dividend or subpart F income from the subsidiary. The foreign tax credit is limited to the portion of U.S. tax caused by foreign source net taxable income. A separate limitation is applied each year. Any excess credits over the limit may be carried back one year and forward 10 years to be subject again to the limitation in the target year. A separate limitation is applied to each basket. Currently, there are only two baskets, general and passive. 2017 law changes allow big deductions for some types of foreign income introducing two new baskets. Foreign income taxes related to income giving rise to these deductions are reduced. The limitation of foreign tax credit is computed completely separately for the new baskets. Income and taxes in the passive basket may be recharacterized as general basket under either of two rules. The high tax exception and look through. The high tax rule says income that was subject to foreign income tax at a rate higher than the U.S. rate is treated as general basket. Determining the rate is done based on an effective tax rate done under U.S. concepts. The look through rule says dividends, interest, rents, and royalties paid by a CFC are looked through. The recipient treats the income as being in the same basket to which the CFC allocated the corresponding expense. And certain exceptions to these rules apply in certain cases. Losses in a category in one year may offset income in another category in that year. In such case, future income in the loss category is recharacterized to the other category in later years. Certain elections are available to mitigate the effect of these recharacterization rules. There are additional rules I haven't covered in these videos. Individuals may have paid small amounts of foreign withholding or other taxes on dividends, interest, or other income. If an individual's foreign income taxes are less than $300 per taxpayer or $600 per married couple, they simply claim a credit for those taxes on Form 1040. They don't need to worry about the foreign tax credit limitation, basketizing, or any of the complex stuff in this video. They don't file Form 1116. They just claim the credit. These foreign tax credit rules are quite complex and they depend on the other rules we cover in this course. Hope you found this helpful and thanks for learning with me.